right, space fans, it's time to take a deep dive into planet Krell. Today we're going to look at three variations of the Krell patch, and uh, each of them is actually really, really cool. So, first one, right here, you will almost certainly recognize that crossed patched format where the lower two units of the 281 are driving the attack and decay of the A unit. The A unit has its um, pulse coming out and going exactly where you'd expect, right into a source of uncertainty. That source of uncertainty gives us stored random voltages, but we're going to do something different with these uh, stored random voltages. We're going to push those into the bottom of a lag unit. And from that lag unit, you see these two blue guys. Those blue guys are going to lead us to uh, a different place. They're going to lead us all the way down here to an oscillator. And we're going to control the width and the center of our harmonic module. So let's listen to that. This is actually module C. Let's get that lined up here. Now, right now, because these stored voltages are changing randomly and rapidly, we get this uh, really disconnected sound. Let's, uh, let's lag this a little bit. And turn up the lag. We're going to turn up the attack lag of one and the decay lag of the other. And you'll immediately notice that it sounds different. We'll turn both of them up to a half second lag. And we'll just go to the inverse of the first lag that we felt with a positive lag, oh, sorry, negative lag on the first, positive lag on the second. Isn't that cool? So, so here's where we ended up with our lag processor. Right there. Cool. Now, what we're doing, um, we've got three different things going through this filter module. And uh, right now, we're soloing that uh, 261V Mark Verbos uh, harmonic uh, oscillator. But let's listen to A. OK, so A is being fed from the A of the 292, which is being fed by a 259. It's being fed by the principal oscillator of this 259. Now let's look at our pitches here. Turn that up a little bit. There we go. Maybe just a touch more. There we go. So the pitch for this 259 is coming from a 250E. So according to the normal Krell patch, we just be giving it random voltages. What we're doing instead is we're sending those random voltages to our CV input, and then we're picking stages. Now what I've done is I've mapped out a variety of intervals, which are logical for a variety of uh, different patterns. So here's the fun bit. We can control, right now, um, we're listening to um, some quantized number of states that's being controlled here. But let me just pull this wire out for a second. Now we're just basically bouncing between two states. But I can, if I adjust, let me get both of them in frame here. If I adjust my number of states up, hold on, just a little bit. There we go. Now we've got four states. Six states. Probably seven or eight states, haven't counted exactly, but you get the idea. So what we've done 
So we've programmed these intervals so that regardless of how many states I plug in, we're gonna get something logical. Here we are all over the map. And now, when I plug in my state randomizer again, ooh, right there, sometimes it's gonna hang out low, sometimes it's gonna hang out high, but we're gonna get multiple versions of pseudo randomness. One is how many states, and the second one is where we are in the state map, and that's gonna drive our um, 259. But 259 is not the only one being driven. Using the second control voltage, we hit the 261. There you can see it right there. And it's doing its thing. And according to the logic of uh, Krell, we also have uh, obviously some modulation going on here with the um, timbre of one of the modules. And we're also playing a game here of sending a principal, sorry, a modulation oscillator. We're just giving ourselves, we're auto tuning our timbre here and there. Not tuning, but modulating. Anyway, so that's the, that's the A module. And uh, the A module is listening to 259. And the B module is listening to 261. Very cool. And of course, if we turn off our solo, and hear them all together, if that's too much, if we want to turn off the uh, harmonic oscillator, easily done. Now we have our two oscillators moving together, and as you would expect, to make that work, the control voltages one and two are tuned not only for the concept of a variable number of states that are likely to be hit, but in two dimensions. So that's kind of cool. If you want to see the math for that, it looks something like this. Very good. Free plug for Office Depot. They should sponsor my Bukla so I can get another one. Anyway. That is variation number one of the Krell, and just to remind you of our fun little harmonic oscillator, that's Krell number one. Let's go look at Krell variation number two, and uh, we'll focus on that in just a minute. There we go. Okay, so patch number two, again, you see the characteristic cross patching that you would expect. And uh, what we've done right now is we've got it set up so that we've got a pretty, uh, pretty straightforward thing going on ish. Now, you still see the bridge of the characteristic Krell patch that's uh, going into our 292, but here's the Here's the variation going on here, is that uh, we also trigger a pendulum ratchet. So right now, the pendulum ratchet is running, and we've got tick and talk that basically are triggering our two different oscillators that are feeding the patch. So tick happens every time, and talk happens occasionally. And of course, to, because this is Krell, when we love randomness, we're slightly randomizing our fundamental um, tempo, and we're also randomizing the density of talk. So talk doesn't fire all the time. Talk fires when it feels like it, and it's modulated to, uh, to fire either not so often or pretty often with tick. In any event, so these two, tick and talk, activate. Uh, they send, uh, I, I meant to pan a different way, tick and talk of course, go to our stored random voltages right there. And these stored random voltages then head off into, again, a lag processor. But this time, instead of going into the 250 or anything else, they go into a voltage quantizer. And right now we have it set on the boring setting, the octave setting. It's a great setting for tuning but it gets pretty boring pretty fast. There's an octave and a fourth. 
And by just noodling around in here, it sounds a little bit like, uh, I don't know, some kind of contemporary gothic chant. Just noodles around there. And if we want to get really extreme, we can change the scale to some pretty random stuff. Or we can noodle around and we want to modulate. We can play around in there. In any event, what's going on is our, um, we're getting tick and talk moving that way. What we're also using is we're using division B down at the bottom to uh, basically turn the pattern off after some factor of power of two uh, times through the cycle. I'm gonna guess it's somewhere around 128. So after about 128 ticks, this stops working and the run light, which is green, turns to red because it stops itself. So that's kind of cool. Unlike a Krell patch that goes forever, this one actually runs for a little while and then it stops and then it starts again. And uh, the funny thing is it the thing that makes it start is the hangover of the decay of the A unit. So one of the things that we actually trigger with uh, the dying breath of the last note is a restart of the ratchet. So that's that little piece of funnery. And uh, of course, we link these two modulators, sorry, these two oscillators together so that our, uh, so we have the possibility of uh, modulating timbre and other fun things. This goes through a filter, which presently is disabled. And the reason it's disabled is because um, for this particular pattern, the filter actually didn't really do anything. Um, if you want to hear what it sounds like, we can do this. It's just random filtering. It doesn't really add anything, so the heck with it. I just bypass it that way. Now, for our third variation of the Krell patch, look at that. You probably recognize it by now, that crossed patched. Uh, look, okay, we're gonna change. Enough of that. There we go. Now we've got this nice, brooding, ponderous patch, which you would kind of expect from the Corel world. How do we, how do we do that? Well, let's see. We have our um, A unit kicking out a pulse. If we follow where that pulse goes, we see it actually goes into a morphine. And so what we're doing is we're clocking and uh, just we're using a little bit of randomness to uh, decide which of the next note to play. So we've already dialed in what notes we want to play in terms of which eight we want to choose. And then the timing and the order is effectively randomized. So that's that. And it is, those uh, control voltages are driving a pair of 251s. And of course, because these are powerful oscillators, we can really change the character of what we're listening to just by turning a few knobs. And we can also take out, we've got a little drone in the bass. There, now the, now the drone is gone. If we want to bring it back in. There it is. And what's providing that drone is we're just using our pitch tracking on the uh, modulation oscillators with a hard sync that uh, just follows these things around. So we're just getting a little extra bass reinforcement. So again, another Krell patch. And Here's what's so cool about the Krell patch is the way in which you can just simply, simply, simply change the character of what you're listening to. Uh, these wires are blocking everything I can see, so bear with me one second. We're gonna look at what happens as we as we increase. 
increase our attack. Much more ponderous. Like way more ponderous. Drop a heck and delay a lot. Get a little speed in it. Get a little stuff happening. There it is. Bring attack and delay back up. Wonderful. You can do the same thing over here. Remember this quell patch? Let's bring up the volume a little bit. There's our attack and decay. So now, if I turn up the attack, so you'll notice that the cadence of the pendulum ratchet doesn't change at all. But what does happen is we get a longer cycle between our starts and stops. So this becomes a more pensive a little accompanist, or maybe uh, a little more lazy. It's like the musician who takes longer breaks. And if we dial this way down, get a lot more modulation to what we're doing. Oop, aha! What happened there is that our, our saving throw doesn't live long enough to uh, restart our ratchet. Kind of fun. Okay. If I did it in time, yeah, didn't quite do it in time. Anyway, that's that. And again, if we go over here. All right, sounds like the Mahavishnu Orchestra is tuning up. Here we go. going fast. Uh, ah, yes. The motion is being controlled. Uh, this is the other variation. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you about it up front. The other variation of the Krell patch we're using what normally modulates the frequency and the bandwidth of the filter. We're using this to drive the 250E. So we can drive it slowly. Drive it a little faster. One way. Drive it faster the other way. Silly here. You get the idea. So you can see here it is this powerful patch where you just change a parameter and all of a sudden you get a feel, you get a rhythm, you get a, uh, uh, a groove. That is what makes the Krell patch so powerful and so fun.